Sorry. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Glad to be together. Glad to, um, a couple of us who were gone for a while are back. So looks like the yes, absolutely. Take your time. Make this your practice. I know um, a couple of us are nursing injuries. So let's sit up nice and tall. I'm cross legged, but you can sit in um, hero's pose. You can sit on a sofa or a chair. You could lay on the ground and we'll just take a moment, whatever shape we've chosen to make, let's see if we can lengthen the spine and sit up nice and tall. And you might find that you settle right into stillness. You might need to move or fidget a little bit. That's okay too. Just feeling your way into a balanced shape. I'll ask you to tune into what your state is in this moment. How does your physical body feel in this moment? What is your emotional state or your mental state? I've been uh, apartment hunting in Boston. And if anyone's ever done that, you know how gruesome it is. <laughs> and I'm just you know, hashing, hashing, hashing through numbers, checking variables. Oh, and last night I just went, okay, gotta shift, gotta unplug so I can actually have a chance of sleeping tonight. <laughs> and that's really what we're going to focus on today is that ability to make a shift. That ability to make a shift. And so the first part of that is just determining where is your starting point today? What does the body feel like? What's your mind doing? I spoke with someone this week and she was just emotionally volatile and she just couldn't quite get out of that volatility. So, you know, we all have a different starting point in the moment that you're sitting down to right now. Just noticing what it is. As we settle our breath, I'm gonna share with you um, from Journey to the Heart some wise words from Melody Baby, Melanie Baby. She says, the simple act of moving around can change your energy. When your mind starts to flag, move around. When you're agitated, yes, go for a walk, take a bath, get a drink of water, work out at the gym. You are doing more than moving your body. You're changing and rearranging your energy field. So she suggests we listen to the body. It will say what it needs, what it would like, what would be helpful, and if you let it, it will even move quite naturally. <coughs> so what would do it good? So stretch your legs, stretch your arms, go outside, she says, call a friend, meditate, tell a joke to a coworker. You don't have to stay stuck in the energy in, you're in. You don't have to be a victim to the way you feel right now. So just be gentle with yourself when you get stuck, when you need a fresh viewpoint. I always call this your superpower because you actually can change the state you're starting from. And I know um, one of my favorites when I need to just, I need the catharsis of a good cry is to watch Steel Magnolias. 
or terms of endearment. That always makes me laugh and cry. But we all have probably experienced um, when you're feeling pretty blue or stuck and you call a friend and just the act of talking together can help you shift it, even though your friend can't actually solve any of your problems or you laugh. Uh, I was saying on Monday that I have a kid, kiddo who has some pretty bad anxiety attacks and sometimes when that takes hold of them, we would um, shoot pool <laughs> because that would focus his attention out of his bodily uh, reactions. So there are all kinds of ways and you get to be the explorer of what ways work best for you and what you need in each moment. Hence why we looked at what our baseline is in this moment. Maybe you need to rest. Maybe you need to get off the treadmill for a moment and just shift your energy into a quieter energy. Maybe you need to amp things up a little bit, right? So these are all possibilities. So the way we'll start today is by creating tension and releasing. So that's a very small thing. We'll start with the head and the face. So I'm gonna ask you to um, clench your teeth and take your mouth into a grimace. And scrunch up your forehead. So do you feel how you've tensed, tensed your throat and your jaw and your forehead and all the muscles of your face? And now, uh, uh, so great, and you let it go, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to invite you to create tension any way you want. So I know for me, I like to um, often stick up my tongue. And if you look up to your forehead, so it's like our lion's back, ah, we're creating all kinds of tension. And, and, and. Uh. So let's do uh, you are not unfortunately for you, you're not on video. That is recorded for posterity right here. This <laughs> that's okay. But it made me laugh thinking about how ridiculous they look like those masks, Samoan masks or something. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna invite you to create tension in any other place where you're feeling a little bit of muscular tension. So for me, always the neck, right? The shoulders. So Maybe if your neck is tight, you want to place your hands at the base of the skull and press back into it. Maybe scrunch the shoulders up. And then ah, come to the edge. Maybe you want to take the shoulders forward up. Which, what are you doing? Maybe you do. Oh, yeah. That's a good release of tension. She said it made her yawn. Yes. So we're just going to, oh, here I go. My chest is tight. So I'm going to open, open, open the chest. And release. Perhaps this would be useful for your upper back. Maybe a twist would feel good. So what we all need will be different, right? So I'm just going to give you a moment to use your mat as your playground to just explore <laughs> what feels good in your body. All right. And now one last little thing, if you haven't already done this, I'm going to ask you to um, curl up your toes and make a fist and pull your elbows in and take your shoulders down and your belly back. Are you, your feet cramping? Oh, you can't do it there. Oh, sorry. You're in Varasana. Well, you could do it, but it's harder in Varasana. And then, ah, that guy. Tension here. Okay, so that's a great idea. Now, if you've been sitting in Sukhasana, you might change the cross of your legs. Okay, so curl up your toes, curl up your fingers. Uh, I'm getting. Cramps, cramps, cramps in my feet. Oh, and let go. Oh. Okay, beautiful. So let's just do a little bit of breathing first. Let's inhale the arms up above the head with the arms as wide as they need to be so that the shoulders can come down. 
<laughs> Good. And I'm just going to ask you to draw your front ribs towards the back body. And we're going to inhale and pulse, 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 pulse. exhale, the arms down. So we'll do the same thing again. Inhale and pulse. So you're holding that inhale breath. And release. Two more times, just like that. This is especially good for us who are having any allergies that um, create some um, congestion in your upper chest, your upper airways. Ah, and release. And then let's bring the hands in front of us. Inhale, exhale the arms apart as far back as they want to go. Again, keeping the engagement of the core. So inhale the hands together. Exhale the hands apart. And then release the hands down and just feel the movement that you've created so far in your upper body. Feel that? A little bit of energy in your hands, your neck, your face, and your shoulders. Slide the hands behind the base of the skull and draw a little circle with your nose. And you're just kind of supporting with your fingertips the base of your skull. Making a circle, and you can let the circle get bigger. And then back up. Down. A couple of times. And we'll look straight ahead, and let's turn the circle the opposite direction. Good. It feels grittiness in there. You can hear it. You hear it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And then look up. Down. And as you look down, I'm going to ask you to stay there for a moment and let the chin slide towards one shoulder. And just pulse. Two, three, four, five. And then look down. And then turn to the other shoulder and pulse one, two, three, four, five. And look down. Okay. And then lift the head up and into your fingers. And pull back into your fingers from it. And release. Oh, that feels nice. Some movement, some blood flow. So let's continue that. Um, I'd like to take one hand down to the floor and the other hand out and up and over. Breathing. And then turn your chest down towards the floor and feel the different stretch that you've created. Making sure you're still breathing. And then inhale up and out. All right, feel that side of your body compared to the side that you have not yet stretched. All right, let's reach up and over. Big deep breaths, moving the interstitial tissue between the ribs. And then we'll turn the armpit slightly down to the floor. And up. Oh, 
Oh, okay. All right, so let's come on to our backs for a moment. And hug the knees into the chest. So when I first get here, I like to draw the knees into the chest and away a couple of times. Just letting my body know this is the direction I'm going. And then you can hold the knees in towards the chest, any amount that they'll go. And then let's draw the knees apart and together about five times slowly. Ooh, waking up those inner thighs a little bit. I like to inhale the knees together and exhale the knees apart. And the next time they're apart, Let's leave the knees apart and you can take your forearms on the floor and bring your hands to the underside of the outside of your leg. Right, and then we'll draw the knees together and bring the heels up to the sky and then the arms up to the sky. And let's just for a moment shake. So sometimes we shake when we're standing up. This is another way to move the length in your body. Shake, 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 shake. And we're flushing the blood flow and the lymph out of the arms, out of the legs, into the belly, into the chest. This doesn't look that hard, but if you do it for a while, you're going to find <laughs> how coordinated you feel. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, what? what's happening up here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep breathing. Oh, we're still doing it. <laughs> yeah, we're still doing it. <laughs> okay. And now bring the hands down to your belly. The feet to the floor, let the knees fall in towards one another and just feel all the sensations in your body. Oh. See if you can let go, let go of the back. And let's slide our hands to the floor. Sweep your fingertips down towards your heels. And let's focus on the pelvis for a moment. So let's roll the pubic bone towards the thighs and make a big giant arch in your back. And then roll the pubic bone up towards the ribs. So now you've really flattened your back, right? So we'll go back and forth in this range of motion. Good, and then let's draw the pubic bone strongly up towards the ribs and draw the belly back towards the spine. And then lift your toes up, lift your fingertips up. Your elbows are still on the floor. And then let's lift the um, hips up off the floor just about an inch and then draw the belly in some more. So do you feel that stretch to the front of your thighs? Do you feel your gluteal muscles engaging? And your core is really working, right? So we're gonna breathe here for a little bit. Who feels the low belly really engaged? Anyone? 
Okay, and now lift up just a little higher and then re engage the core. And lift up a little higher and re engage the core. And allow the hips to come down. Now let's walk the feet another couple of inches away. So the heels, you can set your feet on the floor for a moment so your shins don't get too tight. Let's take the knees side to side. Just a little sway in each direction. Okay, and then we'll point our knees up to the sky and our toes up to the sky. And we'll draw the cubic bone up towards the ribs and press through the heels and lift up, lift up just barely off the floor. Really engage the core. And then up a little higher. And up a little higher. Are you still breathing? And lower down, great. Okay, knees into the chest. And then heels come up, kick up to the sky. Oh, let's bring the arms up overhead for a moment. Notice how the ribs want to pop up off the floor. Let's draw the ribs, front ribs in towards the back ribs. Now your legs can be bent or they can be straight, whichever suits you better. And now let's just take the feet away from the body an inch. Now feel the work of the floor, right? So we're stabilizing the back body with our core to keep that engagement. Now this might be where you stop. With your arms up above your head, it might be too hard for you to keep the low back in the floor. So if that's the case, bring them down by your sides or your belly. Okay, now you could stay right here or you could take your feet further away a little bit. And make sure that you can still breathe. And maybe take your feet away another little bit. So we'll all be at different places, right? But wherever you are, as long as you're really working to maintain the stability, then you know you found the right place. And you can keep exploring your head here. And let's draw the knees into the chest. Ah. Maybe roll side to side or take the knees in a circle. Okay, would you extend the left leg along the floor and draw your right shin in towards the, the belt? How fitting. So I don't know about you, but I feel some stretch in the hip flexor of the extended leg, like that front area right here. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Now let's take the right knee up towards the right shoulder and then across towards the left shoulder. And just hold this for a moment and allow that left hip to stretch. And yep, what's the question? Way it's so your knee so. comes in towards the right shoulder and then across towards the left shoulder. Okay. So you're crossing on yep. the other And what I was um, just about to say is that you can do that kissing. So you can bring the knee across and release, across and release. And you can do that several times and then hold it. And oftentimes that helps the hip to, or the area that you're working to let go because you're, you let your nervous system know what's coming. 
It's like having your kid go to the hard time transition. <laughs> okay, guys, you can do this. This is where we're going next. There we go. All right, let's bring the hands down by the floor and kick the leg as straight as it feels right to kick it. It's across your body. Oh, yeah, feel that on the outside of your leg? So you may not completely straighten the leg, that's okay. Let the shoulders go, let the face be soft, breath is still smooth and even, and then we'll bring the leg up. Now, where is your up? Your up might be further away from your body, it might be closer to the body, but let's inhale and bend the knee and exhale and kick up to the ground. And then English, inhale, kick up to the exhale. A few times, and then we'll hold this. Now, if your leg is quite far away, this is going to be very hard for your quadriceps. So feel free to grab a strap. And hold it. Okay, so that now looks really well for a lot of us. So feel free to do that. If you can hold on to your toe, awesome, but I'm not quite there. I, I attribute it to my short arms, but I don't know if they do that. <laughs> That's a good excuse. It is a great excuse, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so here I am. Breathing into this. Can you also think about drawing your kneecap towards your pelvis and engaging your quadriceps a little bit? Good. And then we'll take that right foot to the floor. Left knee into the bind. And we'll extend the right leg along the floor. So here we are, opposite side. We're stretching the hip flexor of the right leg, drawing the left knee in. And now the left knee has come in, and now it's going to come across to the right shoulder. So I like to hold on to the shin bone, but you could also use on the outside of your thigh and draw that up and across. And again, you can use a little movement if you like first, and then hold the stretch. And we'll bring the hands to the floor and we'll kick out through that left leg any amount possible. And feel that stretch to your iliotibial band, right? The IT band on the side of your hip, which extends down to the outside of the knee, meets the peron uh, peroneals, peroneals, I can't say how you say it. I only read it. And then extends down through the side of your calf to the inner side of your foot. So you might feel any part of that circuit there. And then we'll bring the leg up and straight. And you can again do a little movement first. If that helps your body ease into this. Or you can go straight into the stretch, whatever you like. In the front thigh muscle as you stretch the back. And then we'll let the leg bend, foot to the floor. Let's bend both feet and walk the feet apart and just let the knees fall into one another. And take a moment just to feel what the sensations are in your body.
seeing the rise and fall of the belly. Moving along with your breath. And then we'll roll to the side and press up. Ah, okay. So why don't we do a little puppy? Now you can do puppy on the floor. I like to pad my knees. It would look like this. My hips are over my heel uh, knees. Excuse me. I extend my arms away. Soften the shoulders down and then draw the belly in and then just reach the hands away and let the heart melt down towards the floor. If it doesn't work for your body to be on the floor, you can do this at a wall. So you could use a chair. I'm going to pretend this is a chair. You could bend your knees and melt your heart down to the floor using a chair, that would work too. So here again, just as we did when we were lying on the floor, stabilizing up the floor and letting the upper back this time. Do the melting. Mm -hmm. Up and then come out. Beautiful. And let's come into a modified plank. So again, this can be done on the wall, either using your hands or your forearms. You could also do this on a chair. Here's what it would like look like on the floor, and I'll do it in each of these places. I walk my hands forward, soften the shoulders down, draw the belly in. Here's the difference. I'm sliding my hips forward. And this is a really great way to really focus on the low belly and think about the side ribs, these oblique muscles from the side ribs anchoring inward. I could do this on a chair, and I could also do this on a countertop or a wall where I would slide the hands down, take the hips forward and make a straight line. So these are all variations of plank, and we're really focusing on our core. Everybody feeling that? And I like this one on the floor because it really isolates for me the obliques a little bit more than some of the other ones do. So if you're here, I'm going to ask you to take the base of the skull up to the sky and make sure that the spine stays long, including the neck. And then let's come into a resting pose. So maybe you like a down dog. I'm in a child's pose. You could sit on your chair ah, and just rest for a moment forward. You're ready, come on up. You can stay on the floor if you don't mind being on your knees. If being on your knees doesn't suit you today, have a chair like I am. So I'll show it that way first. We're gonna do a gate pose, a gate pose. So if I don't like being on my knees, I'll take my hip over the heel of the supporting leg. If I'm on the floor, I'll put my hip over my knee. And then the other leg will come out to the side and I'm gonna open up here 
which we did a little bit refined on our backs earlier. I'm gonna use the core, lift the heart, broaden the chest. So I'll start here, just really opening and taking up space. And then I might reach up and over. Okay, you could do that here or you could do it on the floor. Just for balance, I'm gonna do the other side and it would look like this. Okay, so wherever you are, standing on the floor here, we'll take one leg out to the side, we'll engage the core and lift the heart. And then when you're ready, inhale up and over. And feel that stretch to the side body. Breathing and I'm opening up the heart. All right, come up and out. Let's do the other side. Okay. So find that openness first. Add the stretch. All right, so we're going to come into a low lunge. And so you can do blocks in front of you, like so. Or you could come up a little bit higher and use the back of the chair or the seat of the chair, and you could work here. So we'll all come into a low lunge. Doesn't matter which foot is forward first. So here again, I'm going to ask you to um, draw the core in, so front body towards the back body. Extend the heart. Think of the obliques wrapping around from the ribs <clears throat> to the midline. And now let's just pulse forward and back, forward and back. You could do this on the chair if that suits you better. You could work here. And then hold this deep, deep, deep stretch. Let's do the other side. First, just finding your integrity here, the length of your spine, the stabilization of your core. And let's reach bringing forward and back. And then we'll hold this slightly elongated shape. Feeling the stretch to the hip flexor. And then we'll take our feet together. So if your foot was on the chair, you'll bring it back down. And let's press through the legs and come on up. Ah. Good. And just take a moment in your Tadasana. So we were feeling the movement of energy in our upper bodies before. Now you're probably gonna feel a little bit more in the hip flexor. Huh. So now we're gonna take the right foot forward, the left foot back, and we'll be up on the ball of the back foot. And we're nice and tall. 
And I'm going to ask you to even out your pelvis. So feel free to take a hold of the chair or the wall if balance is challenging you today. You can do it towards the wall. Good. So tilt the pelvis forward for a moment and then lift the sitting bones up towards your rib cage. There we go. And the front knee is a little bit bent. You feel it? And you can have it slightly bent or bent quite a bit more. The back leg might be bent as well. So some of us can totally straighten it, but right now we're up in um, high lunge, so we're up on the um, ball of the back foot. It's a little harder. I know it's harder for a lot of us to balance here. And we're going to bend the back knee and lower down a little bit. And then come up. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Oh, creating some strength here. Ah, and then come into the high lunge and fold forward. And you can bring your hands to your thigh or the blocks, the chair, or the wall. Good. Let's take the right hand to the right hip and turn from the belly towards the bend leg. Now feel that outer right hip hugging to the midline. Feel the stretch and the work there. Good, untwist. Let's step the feet together. Press through the heels and then woo. <sighs> so I don't know about you, but I felt that in the hip flexor. I felt in the outer hip, the gluteals. Mm -hmm. So now we know there's another side. <laughs> Shall we step the right foot back? So first coming into the high lunge. Oh, so switch. <laughs> Whatever you did the last yeah. time, switch. Okay. And you can bend the back leg, make sure that the pelvis is neutral, that the spine is long, the head is above the heart, the heart is above the pelvis. Oh. Ah. Good. And now let's bend both the front leg and Dip down through the back. And then fold forward. And now we'll, I'll say, take your hand that's on the same side of your bent leg to the hip, and then twist in the direction of the bent leg. So you're going to twist my leg. You're twisting to you? Yep, yeah, towards the bent leg. Yeah. Oh, good. I <laughs> like better. Yeah, that is good. Good. Uh, feel those hips working. We'll twist and step the feet together. And then bend the knees a lot and imagine pushing up, spring them up, using your legs up and into Tadasana. Now you're feeling the heat, right? <laughs> okay, let's take a moment and let the body absorb what it's done so far. Ah. Okay, I'm ready, letting the eyes open. Excellent. I'd like to open the chest just a little bit more. And so we'll use the um, wall for this. And the way um, we'll do it is we'll do that wall clock. So I'm up here, and then we're back five minutes, back five minutes, back five minutes. So find a little spot on the wall. 
Tadasana. Let the shoulder relax down. So come far enough away from the wall that the shoulder can relax down. And then when you're ready, let's walk the fingers back five minutes. And notice if when you brought your hand back with your uh, head jutting forward, can you keep it aligned? And come down another five minutes. Um, the quarter out, the quarter after the hour, depending on which arm you took. Now bring your hand to the wall and spread your fingers. Ow. <laughs> now. Keep the palm on the wall, but lift your fingertips up off the wall. Come down and you can either bring your arm up or down with the wrist super to right. I just feel what that side of your body feels like. All the way down the front body and down the inner arms, right? Very intense. It's very intense. And here's why we're holding our yeah. our devices all the time yeah. where we're typing. Ugh. Okay. So other side, find your chidasana. Knees and shoulders. And over the heart. And then let's walk in the back side. Five and five minutes. And then let's turn the uh, palm to the wall and spread the fingers. Okay, one more. Just if you bring your arms um, out and back, back behind you, and then turn the palms down for a moment. Just see what that feels like. That feels good. So give your body a shake, whatever it needs, maybe a, a little stretch for the back body because the front body was so open. Ooh, la, la, la. It needs a nap. Yes. No, a nap. <laughs> it needs a nap. Guess what? We're taking a nice long shavasana today. That is the next thing. All right, so we're going to do a little standing, a little bit more standing before we come down for shavasana. So we'll come into our wide leg stance, whether that's um, walking or jumping. Nice wide stance. Okay, so I'm going to do this from the side for a second just so you can see, uh, I can illustrate a tendency. So often this happens. Do you see my low back and my belly spilling? So, same as in Tadasana, let's bring these frontal hip bones up so that the pelvic bowl is level. Imagine this is like magic elixir and you don't want to spill it. Okay. Your power helps right here. Okay, so here we are. Mm, this feels pretty solid, right? So now let's all turn this direction. So one leg turns out 90 degrees. Your back foot can stay parallel or the heel can drop back. See which feels better to you. Good, and then inhale. This just goes for a ride with the knee that bends. Good, so that way none, none of us are leaning over that knee, right? Good, and then we'll sweep the hands down, turn the palms away, 
sweep up to about shoulder height and just turn the palms. There we go. Notice if that back foot lost the connection and can you re-engage it? Ah. So I'm gonna challenge you if possible to close your eyes for a moment and just feel your feet. It's hard, isn't it? Feel your feet on the ground. Sometimes when we close our eyes and we take away the external stimulus, it helps you to feel more deeply into what's happening in your body. All right, open the eyes. You can look over the arm that's over the bent knee if you like. And then straighten both legs and let's find the hip crease and just slightly deepen the hip crease back and then tip out of it. So here's the thing. If I turn my belly towards this, I can go much deeper, right? But if I turn away, I might not have as much range of motion, but I'm gonna feel a good stretch to the inner thigh. Quadriceps still drawing to the bone, and then the navel turns away, and your hand can remain on the hip or up above the shoulder. Good, let's try it, Karen, how's that feel? Thank you. Your head is beautifully up. Okay, I know that's, that's a challenge. I know it's a challenge. All right, push through that leg that you're reaching over and come up and out. How about the other side? Okay, so before you rush into the next place, let's find our foundation again. So notice how if you tilt these pelvic, uh, these hip bones forward, feel how um, you lose engagement through the back and through the front here. Let's lift this up. There we go. And then turn one leg out. Take the torso along for a ride as you just bend that knee. Beautiful. And let's sweep into your, your Vajrasana too. Now let's straighten that bent leg, deep in the hip crease, back, 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 back. And come into your triangle pose, Trikonasana. And just like I challenged you to close your eyes in the warrior two, the last direction, I'm gonna challenge you to close your eyes here and notice, yes, what's happening? Do you chibble toggle a little bit? So what's cool about this is it makes me realize, oh, did I let go of my core? Yes, I did. Did I let go of the back edge of my back foot? Maybe, how about the quadricep? Is it lifting to the bone? So it's a little easier to just feel and notice what's happening in your body. And then lift up and out and take the feet forward. Ah, let's toe heel the feet together. And how about if we come into a forward fold? You can do it in wide leg or you can, this can be really nice. You can take this here and come into a forward fold here. So your choice of a forward fold, it might be a child pose. You might come rest with your knees bent and your forehead on the back of a chair. When you're ready, inhaling, extending, 
we'll slowly work our way out. If your feet were far apart, you might walk them a little closer in. And then the hands to the thighs, inhale up halfway and let your blood flow regulate for a moment before lifting and pressing through your legs all the way up. Ah. Ah. Okay, so we know it's really hard to motivate ourselves to 75 minutes of yoga at home, right? <laughs> really hard to do that. But you could choose one or two of these things just to move your body a little bit in the morning, even if it's to take five breaths, right? Those, these are powerful things that you can do. But I don't know about you, I had never left the yoga class where I didn't feel like someone had washed me from the inside out, you know, right? Oh. So that's the power we have. And it doesn't have to be a yoga class. Maybe you take a big bike ride. Maybe you um, want to take a walk in the woods, right? These are all ways that we can move ourselves. Okay, so let's come on down to the floor. Um, actually, I'm gonna have you do legs up the wall. If anybody remembers how to get in legs up the wall, I'm gonna do it myself. Nice and close to the wall. One hip facing towards the wall. Roll down onto the side and then onto the back. And magically the legs just go up. Let's just take for a moment here and allow the weight of the hips, the legs, to settle down into the hips and to spread the back. Next time you exhale, let's bring the legs apart. On your exhale, bend the knees and take the soles of the feet together.
inhale, exhale, and extend the legs back up the hill. On your exhale, we'll take the right ankle and cross it over the left thigh, flexing that right ankle. And then let's draw the knee towards the chest and then towards the wall. And a couple of times back and forth. Flex the knee towards the wall. And then we'll take that knee towards the wall. And you may find that that right hip is already stretched and is talking and saying, yeah, that, that's a good place to stop. I'm not in pain, but I feel the stretch. You could also intensify this by sliding the lifted heel down the wall a little bit. And now keeping your body in the exact shape it's in, can you turn the left knee to the left a little bit? That will take the right heel to the left as well. You feel a little more stretched to that outer hip? Good, let's be there for a little bit. And bring the knee back. Now let's extend both legs up the wall again. Let's be here a moment and pause, letting the back come into neutral, relaxed state again. And then the next time you exhale, let's bring the legs, uh, the left leg down and cross the foot over the right thigh, flexing that left, left ankle. And you can again move the knee towards the chest and away a few times. And then hold that stretch and see where your baseline is. Is this the place to stop today? Bend that extended leg as much or as little as you need to to find the right amount of space. Now we'll take that right knee over to the right. Just enough that you really feel the outside of that left hip. And a nice stretch.
take the knee back and once more extend the legs up. Now we're going to set up our Shavasana. So if you like legs up the wall, feel free to stay there. If you prefer something else, please take that. If you're choosing legs up the wall, because we're going to be holding this for a little while, we might choose to take a strap around the shins just to keep the legs in place. For instance. That it stabilizes the hips. It feels really nice. So if we're there for a short time, I don't always take the time to do that. But if I'm going to be holding this for a little while, I, I often will do that because it allows the hips to relax a little bit more. So finding that place that allows you to relax and let go. And so this is another kind of shift. We were working rather vigorously in certain places today, working on our core and our glutes and our hips. All the areas that um, affect the low back, I had a request for some low back work. And now we're going to shift into a quieting mode. Practicing how to be gentle with ourselves. So we can get out of high gear. Sometimes we get stuck there. Offering ourselves a fresh viewpoint.
taking a couple of deep breaths that bring you back into your physical experience. You check in with your physical. What does it need? What do you need to stretch or wiggle? Gradually bending the knees. If you're in legs up for long, I'm taking off the strap if you have it on. Come to the side, give yourself a moment to transition there. back to seated. Now we'll join with one hand on the heart and the other on the belly. You take your time getting there, but once you do, I'm going to ask you to think about how the top hand doesn't move and the bottom hand does as we breathe deeply and comfortably. taking roughly the same amount of time to inhale as we take to exhale. Honoring that light within yourself, that light within your others, and all others, that ability to balance yourself so that you can see the love and light within yourself and all others. Namaste. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Yay. Thanks, guys. You feel okay?